Welcome back, everyone. This is The Change Log, and I'm your host, Adam Stakoviak. This is episode 158, and on today's show, we have Eric St. Martin and Brian Kettleson joining us. They are the organizers behind GopherCon, and if you didn't know, The Change Log is going on the road. We're taking Change Log Films to Denver to cover GopherCon, so if you see us there, cameras in hand, make sure you say hello. We're going to be there saying hi to everybody we can July 7th through 10th. And we talked to Eric and Brian today about everything we could about GopherCon. What it takes to create an event like this, the size, the days, the after parties, the hack day, the workshops, and even their diversity program. Eric and Brian care so much about the Go community, they created a diversity scholarship support fund as part of GopherCon. So even if you're not going to the event, you can support this scholarship fund to ensure diversity in the Go ecosystem. We're also shooting Season 3 of Beyond Code at GopherCon, so if you'd like to participate, check the show notes for details. This episode is sponsored by CodeShip. CodeShip is a hosted continuous delivery service focusing on speed, security, and customizability. You can set up continuous integration in a matter of seconds and automatically deploy when your tests have passed. CodeShip supports your GitHub and your Bitbucket projects, you can get started with CodeShip's free plan today, and should you decide to go with a premium plan, you can save 20% off any plan you choose for three months by using our code, the ChangeLog Podcast. Again, that code is the ChangeLog Podcast. Head to CodeShip.com slash the ChangeLog to get started. And now, on to the show. All right, we got Eric St. Martin and Brian Kettleson joining us today. The organizers behind GopherCon. Uh, if you don't know, the Change Log is going to be at GopherCon. We're working with Brian and Eric to film all sorts of stuff about GopherCon this year. So if you see us, we'll likely be carrying cameras. But say hello. We want to say hi to everybody we can. But Eric, Brian, how are you? Welcome to the show. Uh, doing great. Happy to be on. Yeah, thanks. We also got Jared on the line as well. And, you know... I know that I'm speaking for Jerry when I say this, but we've been really excited about Go. Yep. Talking about GopherCon today, we've had several shows on Go. We cover Go pretty much every week in Change All Weekly. But Jared, how excited are you personally about GopherCon this year? I'm excited uh, for two reasons. First of all, I have dabbled in Go, so I'm excited to learn a little bit more. I do have one production Go application, which is more than zero, uh, but not very many. And secondly, because I love me some Denver, and I'm excited about that. That's the funny thing is that Eric and Brian, neither of them are from Denver. Are you guys? I'm I'm originally from Wyoming, and everybody who grows up in Wyoming ends up in Denver if they want a tech job. So after let's say I moved to to Florida, I don't know, ten years ago, and when we were looking to do a conference, um, we wanted some place that was kind of neutral because San Francisco is is kind of not neutral in terms of corporate territory. So we thought Denver might be a really neutral place to have a conference that is not a, a Google conference. This is a Go conference. And, uh, you know, we, we wanted that neutral territory. So I picked Denver just because I wanted to go back home and see the mountains. Just for separation of voices, who was that? That was Brian. And I think that uh, Denver is really an upcoming tech hub, too. There's a lot more places popping up there. And we had a lot of uh, offers for feet on the ground to help uh by the the local meetup group there as well well good deal let's uh let's get some introductions out of the way let's figure out who you guys are we'll dive deep into go we don't have a ton of time because we got a hard stop on one of our sides so we're going to try and blaze through this in 35 minutes just for listeners sake to know what we're working with here but uh let's start with eric eric who are you and uh and how did you get started with GopherCon? so my name is eric st martin uh so Brian and I actually worked together at the time, and we were doing Go, and uh, we kept talking about it for probably, what, Brian, like a, a year and a half, two years? Easily, we, we yeah. Were, we were begging for a Go conference. We, we really wanted one, and uh, uh, Brian, through some Twitter conversations, uh, basically got dared to do it, and uh, he's like, let's, let's organize one, and the rest is history. What about you, Brian? So um I've been doing Go since 2010, early 2010 and uh, wanted 
wanted there to be a Go conference for a long time. Like Eric said, uh, you know, we've been chatting about how nice it would be to be able to go to a Go conference. And at some point, I guess it was about 2012, uh, we said, all right, this needs to happen. Uh, one of our Twitter friends said, well, then do it. You know, why, why sit around complaining about it? Just make it happen. All right, fine. So I, I think it was, it was probably midnight. I registered goforcon.com and sent Eric an email and said, we're doing a gopher conference. Suck it up. Suck it up. <laughs> yep. And of course he was, he was in full bore. So uh, that was, that's the, our origination story, our founding story. Where was the first one at? The first one was in Denver. Okay. And we had no idea what we were doing. Probably still don't, to be fair. But, um, you know, we'd never run a conference before. We just wanted to to have a place to to build a community for Go people to come together. Now, previously, we had already created Go for Academy, which is a um, an organization, a website uh, whose sole purpose is really just to promote Go. We wanted there to be a um, almost like the Ruby Central kind of foundation that. Um, promotes go without any sort of corporate sponsorship any any corporate allegiance or alliances and i thought it was important early on for there to be that sort of foundation for go so that um people could see it as something bigger than google and uh so we already had the go for academy um foundation to move on when we when we built go for con so it was a little easier for us we already had a corporation that we could use to create GopherCon. You know, we already had some web properties and such. That's an LLC, not uh, when you say foundation, you mean foundation is in like not real foundation, like five hundred sixty three foundation. No, it is not a non profit organization. It is it is sort of a not for profit LLC. We we certainly aren't making any money off of it, um, but haven't gone through the trouble yet of turning it into a a non a true IRS type nonprofit organization. And really that comes with a lot of additional overhead and work, which, you know, obviously Go for Academy and Go for Con aren't Brian and I's full time jobs. It's stuff that we do on the side. So anything that causes additional overhead uh hurts. So Jared, for you, was this uh was Go for Con last year on your radar? No. No, it wasn't at all. Which uh is strange, but considering it's not too far away from me, and I'm I'm on the periphery of the Go uh, ecosystem. But uh, was that the first one, guys, or was it there was, was that the second one? That Last was, year was the first yeah. one. That was the first one. All right. And when you guys took the dive, when you when you took the dive, did you uh, know what all goes into throwing a conference, or was it an ignorance is bliss type of a situation? It was definitely an <laughs> ignorance is bliss. <laughs> it it was like this will really... be easy, no big deal, right? Yeah, it was really astonishing how much stuff came up and how much you learn about the whole event industry and all the things you didn't know, the the contracts and complexities and how much stuff costs. It was it was definitely an eye opener. But yeah, last year was our first and I think it didn't register on a lot of people's radar um because we it was relatively unknown. A lot of even companies came to us afterwards and didn't realize that it had happened already. So, Brian, we got to say a big shout out to you because we, well, I guess you and Jared technically, because Jared, you opened up an issue on our ping repo, which people are familiar with. So listeners of the show, we have a ping repo on GitHub that we use to sort of take in uh, notice from the community. It's sort of our open repo where you can create issues and help us learn more about what's happening out there and bring us into the into the know. But we also use it to sort of blast out some information um, and in this case, we use it to document the ChangeLogs 2015 conference scene, and that was an evolving issue. And Brian, you were the very first person to to uh, <laughs> come on there and comment. And, the, and what you said was, um, "Go for Con, Go for his role." And then you linked out to uh, GoForCon.com, which was great because not long after that, we sunk up, and now you're on our list of conferences we're going to as the ChangeLog and ChangeLog Films. So that was that was pretty cool. I'm quick. Quick trigger finger. You are quick, quick, quick trigger finger. <laughs> um, let's let's talk a bit about. I guess we sort of talked about what it takes to create a conference like this, but but when we say like this, can we can we share a bit about the size change from last year to this year, and what the space is so big this year? I've been talking to Heather and you guys behind the scenes about what's what's all going into making this year's 2015 GoForCon take place, but you know, can we talk about 
the size difference of last year to this year and what's been learned? Sure. Um, so I guess it, it might help with the uh, history of the progression too. So when Brian and I first started talking about this, we knew it was something we were new to. And uh, the, I guess the original idea was more a regional style conference, you know, two to 300 people. So we made room for about 400 people to begin with, assuming, you know, that'd be our cap. And we ended up selling out and we worked with a hotel to make room for more people. And I think we bumped it up to around like 500 or 550. We sold out again. We made room for 750 people. And then I, I think that batch of tickets sold out in less than a week. And then we were capped. There, there was no more room left in the hotel to expand. So with that amount of growth and just the huge adoption of Go, even in the last year since Go for Con, is just staggering. So we wanted to make room for uh, kind of where our home should be uh, from now on. And the convention center, the Colorado Convention Center there in Denver, had a lot more room for us. So, uh, I mean, the, the main uh, ballroom that split the same way it was last year here is 50,000 square feet. So we have a lot of space and we made room for 1,500 people this year. Uh, so we hope we sell out and, and in some respects we hope we don't because then what do we do next year <laughs> grow <laughs> yeah so I, and logistically i think after 1500 you almost have to do multi-track and we've been trying to stay single track mm -hmm. but we'll see how it goes well uh, just curious about the name go for con um you can you can throw the f on the end or you can take the f off uh, comic con that's that's a convention Rails Conf, that's a conference. Maybe splitting hairs a bit, but did you leave the F off because you were planning on it being a convention at some day, or was that just kind of how it, how it fell out? It, it just didn't. It didn't sound as good. Go for Conf doesn't sound as good as Go for Con. Good point. Well, now, now it's named well because it, it at these sizes. I mean, if there's fifteen hundred this year, uh, that's three thousand next year, and then six thousand <laughs> the year after that. Right? <laughs> just kind of that exponential growth. You guys we even have speaking, a convention on your hand. Yeah, we were speaking with a couple of people that were saying, you know, things like Puppet Conf took, you know, three years before it hit 700 people. So I think it really astonished us that the first year out that, you know, we had so many people attend and so many, so many great sponsors that helped make that event happen. And, you know, we were just two programmers, you know, throwing a conference. So it was really great to see, see the community respond and all of our sponsors. And they were so great with us, too. They just re they were kind of in the same boat we were. You know, they really wanted the conference, too. And if they could give us some money to help that happen, they were happy, too. Let's talk about the, the one comment that you got back from Rob Pike that really touched your hearts. Can we talk about that a bit? <laughs> so, yeah, this is Brian. Um, I, I can't give you the exact verbatim comment but it he we were walking out of probably lunch at on the last day so there were still a few uh, talks left to give on the last day but most of the conference had already happened and he he turned around to me and he said I can't thank you enough for making this happen you know this is this is such an amazing event and and it really feels like uh, you know watching our baby go off to her debutante ball it it feels like our, our baby is growing up and and become bigger than us and you know, it, it really was heartwarming to, to see that appreciation and, um, and joy actually in, in Rob's eyes. He was, he was very excited. You know, it's like his, his little girl was going off and getting married and starting her own family. And it was yeah, a big I think, deal. I think the whole team really, really loved the atmosphere. Everybody there was so excited and just the conversations and things that were taking place was just mind blowing. And, um, I'm not sure of the exact percentage, but I'm fairly certain that the majority of the Go team will be at this year's event as well. well let's break that down then, since uh, we've talked about last year and this year's size changes and what it takes. Uh, so this year is happening July 7th through July 10th uh, in Denver, Colorado. So pretty easily accessible to, you know, from an airport standpoint. Uh, it's three days after parties, a hack day. And an optional workshop day. Does that about break it up into to how you describe the tracks and what's going on with, uh, with the actual conference itself? Yeah, and there's going to be some uh, outside events, too. Some of the sponsors are working on planning uh, some events on nights outside of the after party. 
and then the Denver Go group is doing a kickoff party like they did last year at, at Galvanized group, right? as well. Yeah. Uh, yes. And which day is that on? That is on Tuesday, the same day as the workshops. Okay. So basically, if you're getting there that night and you're not attending the workshops or you're getting there that day to attend the workshops, there's something going on that night for you to take part in. So watch uh, watch the hashtag. What is the hashtag for this uh, conference? Have go you, for con. Go for con. Hashtag go for con. Hashtag go for con. So if you follow that, uh, hopefully you'll be up to the know in all the things happening uh, with the conference itself. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about in terms of the, the track itself? Any particular talks that you guys are excited about? Uh, a keynote speaker? Or in terms of talks, we've got some really amazing stuff. We've got um, Dmitry Vukov coming in from Russia. He's on the Go team now, previously from Intel. Um, an amazing technical guy who is going to talk about changes to scheduling in Go 1.5. I'm, I'm personally, that's probably the thing I'm most excited about. Uh, we've also got uh, Rick Hudson who's coming in to talk about the changes to uh, garbage collection in Go 1.5 and memory management. Uh, that's going to be another really big one. Uh, honestly, all the talks are going to be amazing this year. And uh, I mean, Hannah Kim's coming in to talk about uh, Go on mobile devices, which is really interesting. And that's kind of a, um, a pattern that we like with the talk selections too, is to get some, some things that are slightly different. Like last year, you know, we were excited to get the GoBot guys in there because mm -hmm. it, it was something totally different from what everybody else was using Go for. And uh, we've, got, uh, we've got Go Kit. Go Kits, uh, we're really excited about that and wanting to see its progression. There's pretty much all of the talks I want to see. <laughs> and there were so many that we wanted to see and unfortunately had to turn down too because we had a nine to one ratio for slots to fill versus submissions. We had over, we had 164 proposals this year. Can we yeah, talk? Go ahead. Go ahead, Brian. I, I was just going to say, talk about heartbreaking. When you get 164 proposals for 22 speaking slots, it's so painful to turn down all those great proposals. You know, sure, out of 164, uh, I, I probably could have easily enjoyed watching 120 of those talks. Mm. You know, there were so many good proposals. So it, it was very painful turning a lot of really good proposals down. That's interesting yeah. to see the, the ratio of talks proposed uh, to the attendees coming too like they're in the same ballpark but missing a couple of zeros or missing one extra zero i guess but you know like in terms of how many proposals versus how many people are coming there's a lot to talk about so it, you know to go back to jared's point for next year being 3000 it might be a clear winner that next year will double because there's such uh such a diverse amount of topics to cover about go it's it's uh i know when we had andrew duran on recently at the tail end of the call, we start to talk about mobile a little bit. So it's exciting to hear more about what's happening in mobile because they're, they're working towards things for Android first and 1.5. And uh, I know he was pretty excited about the, the efforts taking place there. Yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely really excited to see all the places that Go is, is taking off. And distributed systems world, it seems like everybody who's building a new distributed systems tool is, is, is all Go. Maybe let's... Uh be slightly self-promotional at this point. Uh, let's talk about why we're, why we're involved together. Uh, the change log and GopherCon and you guys. Um, and I guess I can maybe crack that nut if you don't mind. Um, we are working with you guys to, we opened up sort of a, a films division to our, to our company. We started shooting this. Um, well, how would you describe it, Jared? How would you describe Beyond Code? Is it like an interview series? Would you call it that? Yeah, that's exactly what that's I would exactly call it. That's exactly how we call I, it. I don't know what to call it. Um, a film? A short short film? I don't know. Interview series? What do you want to call it? I'd say like a brief interview series we shoot only at conferences. So mm -hmm. the whole point is like to be in the, the scene people. itself, to be enmeshed, immersed into the community. And it's all about finding not so much the people, but just, just, um, just feeling the heartbeat of the community, which is what I loved about uh, you, Brian and Eric, about your passion towards GopherCon was that it seemed like that's exactly where you were coming from. So we were in synergy in terms of like what we were trying to do with that. But also in, in addition to, you know, our interview series called Beyond Code, we also want to start working with conferences to help them shoot like a creative uh, documentary style behind the scenes look from the speaker's point of view to highlight reels to promotional videos. And so we're working with you this year 
So if you see people running around with cameras, um, like a couple cameras, a mic, something like that, it's likely us. I don't think you have anybody else going to be there running around with like cameras or mics. Do you guys? Uh, we just have the uh, AV company recording the talks themselves, so we won't have anybody running around with cameras and mics. But I mean, we're really excited about having you guys there too, because one thing we wish we had last year was B-roll footage. I mean, unless you were there, it was really hard to describe just the atmosphere there and how excited everybody was. Yeah, and that's our aim too. So if you see us running around and we ask you to hop on camera, know it's it's legitimately you know it's legitimately asked for by. Eric and Brian, they want us there. They want us to sort of document what's happening there. And we love the community of Go, and we want to be a part of it as well. So being there and, and doing that is just going to, like, hopefully change the game for, for you guys in terms of documenting how this conference played out, the people that are involved there, and just give a lot of, a lot of like, nice artifacts and takes away, takeaways for, uh, for this conference. So that's, 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 uh, that's a neat thing I'm pretty excited about, personally. Yeah, me too, actually. Um... I think one of the the disappointments I have from last year is that we don't really have any professional photographs. We don't have any significant recordings. Uh, You know, there's, there's no takeaway from last year other than the recorded videos that Comfrex did. And I I enjoy watching them over, but I'd really love to have, you know, a a more intimate uh, recording experience. And I'm really looking forward to you guys coming in this year and, and kind of giving us that, uh, that way to look back and show, show me how much fun I had while I was there, there and go. then sh- show a new, <laughs> uh, a new view into what GopherCon is for maybe potential um, attendees next year. Well, since you mentioned attendees, um, let's, let's try to get some attendees. So we're at how many, do, do you, do you talk about how many ticket sales you have? I know you just had the announcement of a thousand recently, but do you kind of give down to the beat of where you're at? I haven't looked today, but uh, we're definitely above a thousand. Um, it, we're following the same trend we did last year where the last, um, I don't know, the last 25 or 30 percent of the tickets sold really fast about two months before the conference. So my expectation is um, now that we're above a thousand and now that we're within 60 days, it's going to sell out really fast. Yeah. Uh, what we're seeing now is big companies, uh, big groups of 20 and 30 people booking all at once. So the tickets really go faster towards the end. And it, it's really fun to watch the emails come in, you know, uh, XYZ large fortune 100 company just booked 30 tickets. Wow. That is, that is so cool. Those are the kind of emails you're getting right now? Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. I love the ones where it's a random company too. And you're like, what are, I wonder what they're using Go for. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome. So if you're listening right now and you're thinking, man, I, I'm really considering going to this conference. Now is the time to step in, buy your ticket. And let's, can we talk about the buying, the ticket buying experience? And only to mention this one other thing, because I was sort of surprised by it. And when we talked um, several weeks back and I asked you about this, this portion of it, I was like, what is this? And then we sort of dove deep into this topic of discussing diversity and you have a diversity scholarship support fund. It's not an admission ticket, but you can give whatever amount you'd like. I think you can multiply it. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, in, in terms of when you subscribe, when you when you um, uh, register to go, what, what what is that about? Sure. So when you go to goforcon.com, there's a link at the top for um, registration, and that takes you to a landing page hosted by Tito, which is a, a really nice company that does uh, good ticket sales for us. And, and the options that you have for um, choosing uh, tickets include general admission plus a donation to our diversity scholarship fund, which isn't actually an admission ticket. It's just a donation that helps us uh, bring people in who ordinarily wouldn't be able to attend. So our, our, our concept behind the diversity scholarship fund is that, um, you know, your typical conference, it, especially lately, has just been a slew of, of white guys standing around talking about cool computer programming stuff. But we know, you know, it, the workforce in programming isn't just white guys. It's it's a lot more than that. So we want to make GopherCon representative of the workforce, representative of the population. And if there's anything that we can do to help financially make that happen, that's what the Diversity, diversity Scholarship Support Fund is for. So anybody who makes a donation to that, uh, we've got a, a online scholarship application form on the GopherCon website. And you can go in and say, you know, hey, I'm, I'm kind of an underrepresented group. 
uh, I would love to get some of those funds. It would help me attend GopherCon. Uh, we've got a committee that will uh, help allocate those funds and, and try to bring people in that normally wouldn't be able to attend so that the faces we see in the audience actually represent the faces of, of people who are doing Go across the world. I think the other thing we should point out too is the scholarship fund doesn't uh, just go towards attendees. It also helps for um, underrepresented groups in speaking as well. So um, some of the stuff that we, we'd like to do is assist in getting maybe public speaking training and things like that to kind of op open the doors for more people to jump up on stage and feel comfortable doing so. Yeah, that's a great point. That was Dave Cheney's idea. Um, the idea that um, in order to, to foster good public speaking, uh, you not only have to accept a first-time speaker who might be uh, new to speaking, but make sure that their speaking experience is a positive one and not a negative one. So um, anybody who requests assistance can get uh, some funds from us to get good public speaking training. And that's another great way to build diversity in the speaking community so that uh, someone who perhaps was afraid to speak before can have a good experience at GopherCon and go out and speak at other conferences too. Yeah, Dave has really led the... Uh the proposals committee and uh has been working a lot with the speakers and he's done a phenomenal job with that uh he set up um kind of a mentoring program where some of the more experienced pro or speakers will will help mentor some of the less experienced ones to kind of help them refine and practice their their talks so that they can feel more comfortable getting on stage and i i thought that that was a terrific idea because a lot of people, it's, it's almost a similar issue to contributing to open source. People are, are afraid of the judgment on the other side, so they just don't step up. And I think by having these mentoring programs and offering speaker training and things like that, I think that we can hopefully start seeing a lot more new faces on stage. I like the way you're taking the, you know, the banner, not only to create the, the ability for the community to converge together, but also helping the community come in a positive way, especially on the speaker side here, that, you know, that's, that's such a, a neat thing. You don't see that often from conference organizers, especially two programmer conference organizers that, that just sort of like decide one day, Hey, I'm going to register GopherCon and, and put this thing together, uh, you know, two years ago. It's really nice to see that, that your hearts are investing in the community and a positive community convergence together. I think that's really awesome. There are conferences out there that are, are solely made for making money, and GopherCon is certainly not one of those conferences. Our conference is about building community, and, and community means everybody. It doesn't mean just the people who look like me and think like me. Yeah. Um, and, and Eric and I both strongly agree that the more diverse that community is, the stronger we'll all be. Um, you know, the, the Go community right now is an amazing community. It's, it's inclusive and it's strong and we only want to do everything we can to keep it that way. That's awesome. So when you go to goforcon.com to buy tickets, you can get a general mission ticket for 500 bucks. They have a special field there for a donation to the diversity scholarship support fund. It's a nice text field. So you can crank that number up or down to your liking. We hope that you crank it up because that's a great initiative. You guys also have an, some other interesting fields on the ticket purchasing page, which is for childcare. Can you tell us about that? Sure. That's uh, it's actually a continued part of the diversity um, project that we have going on. We realize that there are people, uh, men, women, all sorts of people who might not be able to attend the conference because they've got children at home, and it's it's more difficult for them to attend because of those children. So we contracted with uh, local registered daycare providers, and we'll be providing daycare from, for any children from 1 to 15 years old at the conference, and that's free of charge. So if, if having your kids with you is the thing that keeps you from coming, uh, we're going to fix that. So all they need to do is, is just give us a notice of, of how many kids they're going to bring in each age group so we can have the appropriate number of daycare staff present. And the older kids were, were even trying to organize some, some little programming camps for them Very so that cool. they, they, they can have their own little gopher con. Great idea. Uh, no promises on that yet because it's not finalized, but that's our goal is to have some, some programming activities, some, some more fun things to do rather than just sitting around playing Nintendo all day. 
Oh, kids don't play Nintendo anymore. I'm showing my age. <laughs> what, what do the kids play? Minecraft. They're playing Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, Minecraft. Watching Minecraft on Twitch. <laughs> yes. That's so funny because I didn't register that you were wrong, uh, uh, so it shows my age too. <laughs> <clears throat> well, not wrong, but yeah. just not exactly correct for the current time that we're in. <laughs> so, so there's a good shout-out to one of our Diamond sponsors, Twitch. My son, who's 13, uh, he would rather watch Minecraft on Twitch than do anything else in the world. And when he saw the Twitch logo on the GopherCon page as a diamond sponsor, wow. he immediately wanted to know if he could meet uh, whoever it is, the guy that he watches all the some some really amazing Minecraft guy. And, and that, that's a, a thing I don't understand why watching people play Minecraft is cool, but it really is for my 13-year-old. So we're excited to have Twitch there, and we know that they use a lot of Go on their back end to, to power their systems. So... It's like uh, rock and roll be... music. You don't get it, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know you're getting old when you're like, why do the kids watch the, the Minecraft <laughs> on the internet? You know, I don't I don't get it either, even though I was a, a gamer all my life. And, uh, yeah, just getting older. Just getting older. They get it. They get it. So you guys got tons of people uh, supporting this in all walks. You've got some great sponsors. Who are some of your biggest sponsors? Who would you want to give some huge thanks to for making GoFreeCon this year possible? So our, our biggest sponsors are Google, Twitch, and Cisco. And honestly, we've got dozens of sponsors uh, all the way down to the, the bronze level. We could not possibly pull this conference off at the insanely low prices that we're doing without them. So we have to give them just all the thanks and kudos that we can because uh, having a conference of this quality uh, at such a low price is impossible without these kind of sponsorship dollars. So big plus to all of our sponsors. Go for con.com slash sponsors. You can see them and uh shoot them some love for yourself yeah they've they've all been incredible they're trying to organize things outside of the event they're offering assistance however they can many of them are offering to give us feet on the ground if we need help stuffing bags very cool and uh last year a lot of people were quick to jump on and we, we got a bunch of return sponsors this year uh it's been it's been really exciting and we're we're so glad for their support if someone's hearing this for the first time right now, and they're like, man, I wish I would have sponsored this. Is there still time to sponsor? There's, we're, we've passed our deadline, but that's mainly because of printing. So right now our shirts are going to go out for print. So we'd be happy to bring in more sponsors with the expectation that they wouldn't be able to be on the shirts and, and anything that we've already gone out for printing on uh, by the time they come in for sponsorship. Gotcha. That's cool. I like the sponsors you guys have here. So we, we talked a bit earlier about Twitch and uh, I think it was Brian or uh, Brian. I think it was you mentioning your son. Was it? Yeah. That? A little okay. Twitch addict. Yes. That's, that's, that's perfect for him. Cool. Yeah. My, uh, my fiance is, is the most excited about time hop. Yes. You know, my wife, she loves time hop except for now that Facebook has a feature that's slightly similar to time hop. She's always comparing like, is Facebook's feature better? Is Time Hop's feature better? And I'm like, well, you choose, babe. You know, which whatever, whichever you like. So she's, she's, she likes Time Hop as well. One of the things that's really fun for me as a business, you know, owner, a person who's running a company, is the fact that these sponsors that we're uh, that we have this year for GopherCon, you know, a good 50 or 60 percent of them are vendors to my company. You know, we've got, we use Docker, we use uh, Cisco, we use uh, all kinds Core of these OS. different companies. We use CoreOS, we use InfluxDB, um, you know, we use IronIO, we use Datadog. We all of these sponsors are people that are really deep into the Go community and providing a great service. So for us, it's extra special because you know, not only are they sponsors to the conference, but they're they're people that we do business with, and that's really kind of cool. And doesn't uh, CoreOS also have some some uh, something going on with the the night party? Right, there's an after party sponsored mm -hmm. by them. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, yeah, got... We don't have specifics on that yet, but yeah, they're they're working on an after party themselves. Pretty cool. I should also highlight that some of the companies that we don't currently use because of the sponsorships have kind of drawn our eye towards them too. <laughs> exactly for, for other needs. So become a sponsor, get our attention, we might start using you kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, although I doubt uh, uh, our market is big enough for for them to worry about that. Still, it's really cool that uh, we've met a lot of great companies. You know, uh, another one that's uh, that's surprising, Kismatic, was uh, somebody I hadn't even heard of, and and they reached out, and they've got some really great Kubernetes consulting that they're doing. Um, didn't even know that there was a, a cottage industry building up around Kubernetes. Now that's that's great. Well, I, I think, you know, 
when we zoom out and we look at everything you guys are doing with Go for Con, it's definitely about organizing a community. It's, you know, as you'd mentioned, it's not about profiting from a community. It's about joining a community. And, you know, I, the only thing I would say, and this is sort of like maybe public, public advice, is I, I, uh, I wish the information about the diversity program and the child care was before the registration page because I think that's such unique, important information that I think our community as a whole needs to hear about. And one shows how much you guys really care about the diversity of the community because that's that's an effort that's not taking place. You guys are really taking care to like look at all the finer details to make this community as diverse as possible. And I think it's just something that that doesn't happen every day. And and I'm really happy that you've done that. It's really awesome that you're leading the way in that way. Thanks. It, it means a lot to us. So one month, 18 days, 10 hours from now, people <laughs> will converge upon Denver, Colorado, July 7th through 10th, and enjoy workshops, the main event for one day and two days, and then a final hack day. Can you talk a little bit about the hack day as we trail off? Yeah, so um, last year, the hack day was kind of uh, an anth- just a side effect that we, we created kind of, uh, we had the two main days and we assumed most people aren't going to want to leave right after, you know, 5 p.m. head to the airport, that everybody would be trickling out the next day. So we, we reserved space kind of so everybody could hack and, you know, there'd be some lightning talks early in the morning. And it turned out to be, I think around like four hours of lightning talks. And it, it was just crazy. And Brian and I were up that morning and we kept watching more and more people go down the escalator and we're like, uh oh, <laughs> because we had anticipated that, you know, it would be, you know, less than half the people kind of coming and going as they had to leave for flights. And it turned out everybody wanted to stay. Wow. So this year we, we rolled it in and made it uh, a formal part of the event and we made enough space for everybody to attend um the lightning talks will take place in the main theater and we will have those recorded this year and in addition to that we have uh, a couple of hack rooms that we're still formalizing exactly what will be in those but they will be themed rooms with uh different kind of projects and activities going on hacking on specific projects uh things of that nature and as we formalize those we'll be releasing more information online about it too but i think it's going to be a lot of fun and i encourage anybody who's going to the conference to stay for hack day yeah, hack day is a big deal it's a it's a blast that's uh so the the 10th the hack day is a friday and so the, the conference itself the main one day uh day one and day two is on a wednesday and thursday and july 7th which is the workshop day is a tuesday so it's Correct. it's during the work week. So if it's um, if it's someone who you know can't take a weekend or something like that, it's harder to take a weekend. A little easier to get off for work or you know be sponsored by their employer to get there. It's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday is the final hack day. We're gonna be there for all the days except for the workshop. We're the change loggers are arriving on uh, on the seventh. Not that that matters, but that's just when we're gonna get there. And uh, hopefully we're gonna hit up that meet up that night and then be there all the way to the tenth to the end. And one thing I should point out about Tuesday, the workshop day, is uh, with the talks starting early on Wednesday, a lot of people are going to be arriving Tuesday. We have uh, worked out registration to take place between 12 and 6 on Tuesday. So if you fly in on Tuesday, like between 12 and 6, feel free to come down and register that way. Oh, that's good. There's not as big of a crowd uh, Wednesday morning. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, let's encourage that. If you're there early, if you get there on Tuesday, just register on Tuesday. Save yourself the line and the craziness on July 8th, which is the, the morning there. So very cool. The, the last thing I want to mention um, is for the Beyond Code piece, since it's so many people, um, it's it's like normally we just go to a conference that's maybe – I don't know, Jerry, what would you say, like two or 300 people maybe is mm-hmm. our max so far with doing this for us? So to, yep. to go to 1,500 for us is a, is a much bigger stretch. So I think that the way we would like to maybe handle it, uh, we'll still take the sort of walk-ins, so to speak, but it will be really awesome to sort of capture people in advance. So Brian and Eric would be awesome to work with you guys in tandem with that. But just here on the audio while people are listening to this, um, mm-hmm. we're going to put up a sign-up form on our site and we'll work with Brian and Eric to make that uh, visibly known to everyone else. We'll figure out how to formalize it. But uh, if you want to come on Beyond Code, it's about a five to eight minute interview, totally about you. 
Uh, we'd love to have you. If there's something you want to say specifically about your involvement in the Go community while we're there at the conference, we'd love to sort of like earmark people to talk to. That way we make sure that we get the great footage that you guys really want us to have um, coming from this year's GopherCon. So uh, we'll make that available in the show notes. So check out the show notes for this. And then uh, we'll work with Brian and Eric to sort of press that information out to the rest of the Go community that's actually attending GopherCon, not just those who are listening. So, But if you're listening to this and you're not going, we all got sad faces on. So <laughs> What's go wrong to, with you? Go to GopherCon.com right now. <laughs> um, purchase tickets. Get signed up. Support. Uh, it, let me ask you this, guys. Maybe this is something you didn't plan for. But is there a way for people who don't attend to support this diversity initiative that you've got going on? Absolutely. The the tickets can be bought separately, and we've had plenty of people donate to the diversity fund who aren't attending. So you can buy a ticket for $10 or a ticket for $1,000. We've had companies that have, have contributed significant amounts of money towards those uh, diversity funds, and they're not attending. So it's easy to buy the diversity support tickets uh, without attending. Wow. Please do. Yeah, speakers have also been donating as well. So that's the process then is is just to go purchase tickets, but don't actually purchase one for yourself. Just fill out the part that is about the diversity scholarship fund and magic. Correct. I love it. That's all awesome. All right. Is there anything else you guys want to cover before we tail off and, and say goodbye to everybody? Uh, no, I think they're just encouraging everybody to go. The atmosphere there has, has been phenomenal, better, better than any conference I've ever been to. And, uh, I also encourage other people to do more things to help the community start start local meetup groups, do your own conferences. Although I recommend for logistics to stay small enough where you can stay inside a hotel <laughs> <laughs> and small enough where you don't have to feed people and it makes things significantly easier. Uh, but yeah, definitely encouraging people to do things that help foster the community and help it grow. Yeah, and, and find us on Twitter or email. Uh, Eric and I have been giving a lot of advice to all of the other global Go conferences about you know how to pull those things off. If you want to run a, a conference across the globe and you even want to use the GopherCon name, uh, we don't care as long as you're not running one in the United States. Uh, you can use GopherCon like GopherCon India did, and we'd, we'd be happy to uh, give them lots of advice on how to run one. Very cool. That's awesome. Well, fellas, thank you so much for caring so much about the community. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to come on here and talk to Jared and I about GoForCon 2015. I know we're excited to, to be there and to be a part of it with you and help document such an awesome community converging on Denver. Uh, once again, July 7th to July 10th, purchase your ticket today or support the Diversity Scholarship Fund, which is super awesome to do. Even if you're not going, uh, head to GoForCon.com to find all the news and check out the show notes for any extra links we, we mentioned, like the sign up form for beyond code and, and uh, all the other things. So with that, uh, everyone let's say goodbye. Bye guys. Goodbye. Thanks for having us. See ya.